As we head to the break, we take a look back at today in Bahamian history. On February 17, 1994, a tornado which lasted only 20 seconds turned deadly and swept through Bullocks Harbor in the Berry Islands. The tornado claimed the life of seven-year-old Rudolphia Mackey. She died when her house was swept out to sea. The Wayside Club is also said to have disappeared while the police station was destroyed. Hello, 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 my brothers and sisters across and around the world. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Minister Name. Welcome to my channel, everyone. I pray that you're having a beautiful morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Today I'm going to share with you all my testimony, one of my testimonies. And I want you to listen that God is faithful. God is true to his word and to his promise. And as I was reflecting on the scripture that I can bring to us today, I looked at a few scriptures and it didn't correspond to what I was feeling. So the scripture that came to me is Psalms 32. And I told you guys in a previous video about the Psalms. The Psalms 32, when my son was going through, when I discovered that I took him to the doctors that he may be circumcised. And I explained to you guys in that video that we had fallen on hard times and my husband was barely working and I had to stop working because I was pregnant. And it was time for me to go back, go to Nassau, Bahamas, to the Princess Margaret Hospital to wait to have this baby. So it wasn't until four years later that I was able to um, bounce back and pay up all our bills and we were able then to make an appointment to see the private doctor so we could have get him circumcised and it was then when I took him paid off for him to get circumcised but he had to go to the anesthesiologist to get checked out to make sure that his heart and everything was in good condition for the surgery and that was when I discovered that he had a hole in his heart and he needed surgery right away. And I told you guys that during that time in my life I was so broken. I was so hurt. I didn't know what to do. But there's one thing for sure I knew the word of God. And as I began to sit and read and cry out to God, one day I was so broken and destroyed I was feeling so alone, so low and so alone. And as I began to open my Bible and I began to read Psalms 32, and when I got to the seventh voice verse, to the seventh verse of Psalms 32, was when I felt this burden lift. So today I would read just a portion of the Psalms as I share one of my testimonies of where the Lord has brought me from. Psalms 32, I'm going to read verses 5, 6, and 7. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgavest my, the iniquity of my sins, of my sins, Selah. 
For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of, of, of great waters they shall not come nigh unto thee. Verse 7 reads, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt, shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. And I can say I was delivered by the hand of God. The Bible says, Psalms 34 and 7, It says, The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him, and he delivered them. And I can say that God is my deliverer, and God was my deliverer, and God is still my deliverer. In the year of 1994, I'm going to try and take my time so I can explain exactly what happened during this time in my life. In 1994, me and my husband, we were living in a one bedroom apartment, but we were living over the water like um, the apartments were built on top of this hill, but the ocean, the water was um, I would call it front side or um, shore side it was the ocean where all the boats and everything that we was living on this high rise and one morning February 1994 my husband got up about 7, 7.30 um, I think this was a Friday morning, I'm not sure but I think it was a Friday morning and he got up early and he got dressed and he went out to the mechanic store to the mechanic shop because the vehicle he had at the time um, was giving him some problems so he took it in to the mechanic um, shop earlier that week so that morning he got up and he went out about 7.30 to check to see um, if they were done with fixing the problem with the vehicle so me and my five-year-old daughter, we were, we were home in the room in the bed. And it was a school morning. So we laid there until about 7.45, 8 o'clock. So I got up and I asked, I said, you want something to eat? And she said, yes, ma'am. Now, this might sound a little strange to you guys, but back in the 90s, um, a can of spaghetti soup would have worked for breakfast. So I said to her, do you want some spaghetti and meatballs? So she said, yes. Now, this is February, early February. February 4th, early February. So, you know, it's cold. In the Bahamas, it's chilly, it's cold. And so I had on a yellow night dress. I remember wearing this gray sweatshirt. And she was laying in the bed, still wrapped up. So when I got up, it was spry and it, you know, raining on and off. Nothing heavy, just spry. And it was lightning. There was lightning going on. So I said to her, I came back in room and I said, um, it's lightning on the outside. So I don't want to use the knife to open up this can of soup. So I will make you some flower pop. Flower pop here in the Bahamas, it is, um, it's flour that you mix in water. It's something like a pancake mix. You mix it in the water to the thickness that you would want it. You put on a small pot um, of water and you let that water come to a boil. You pour the flour in a little bowl you mix it with some water and you stir it up to get all the lumps out of that and when that comes to a nice smooth 
the water is boiled and you pour it in that pot and you mix it as you pour it so it wouldn't become lumpy. Here in the Bahamas we call that flower pap and you can you put um, the, the, the um, condensed milk in it, you can put the nut and egg in it, whatever you put in it to give it that nice flavor. Um, same way you would make cream of wheat, you do it something like that so it can be nice and tasty for the adult or the child that will consume it. So I said to her, I will go ahead and I will make you some flower pop instead of opening the can of soup. So she said, yes, ma'am. So I left her in the room and I closed the door and I came out into the front area. Like I said, it was a one bedroom. The bathroom was in the bedroom. So when you come out of the bedroom, you enter like the little um, seating area with the kitchen area. Um, it was, you know, open concept. Everything is one kitchen and then seating area. So I walk over to the stove. And I turn the stove on and I put the water in the pot. And I'm about to mix this, you know, flour in the water, waiting for the water to come to a boil so I can pour that um, flour batter inside of it. And while I was standing there in the kitchen waiting, I heard the sound, and I heard the sound, it's, it's almost as it was like a freight train, or it was like a, a Russian wind. It was howling, and it was howling, and it was loud. And I stood there, and I said, Lord, what is that? And the more... I stood there trying to figure out what is that sound. It was getting closer and closer. Now before I go any further, we had a tent revival going on in our community park. There was a tent revival. There was a, a pastor, bishop that came from out of Nassau, the city, to hold a tent revival. I think it was about a week of tent revival. And at that time, you know, we are young and loving the Lord and wanting to know more about God and wanting to stay clean and stay holy before the Lord. I decided in that week of revival that I'm going to go on a seven day dry fast where I didn't eat anything, where I didn't drink anything because I was young in marriage, you know, going through some little stuff. But I wanted to make sure that I was, my life was lined up and clean up before God. So I went on that fast. And in that fast, it was when that um, situation occurred where I was in the kitchen now, waiting for this water to come to a boil. And I hear this howling, this howling, this howling sound. And I say, Lord, what is that? And the more I ponder what is that, it was getting closer. And it sounded like a train or like a mighty Russian wind was just coming towards me. And I heard the voice said, turn the stove off. It was a little gas stove, a gas range. And I heard the voice say, turn the stove off. And I began to get frightened because it was closer and closer. So as I reached my hand over to the stove, I turned the stove off. And as I turn the stove off, I walk out of the kitchen and I open the room door. And when I open the room door, glass were flying all over. When I say all over the room, the glass were flying. The window bust open and everything was flying all over, all through the room. And the only thing I could do was throw myself in the bed to cover my daughter, my five-year-old. And I throw myself on the bed to protect her from, you know, the glass, you know, just stabbing her. And when I catch myself from throwing myself in the bed, I had to protect her. When I came to, I said to myself, Lord, did the water come up on the shore side to meet me? What is going on? This is what I'm saying in my mind. And when I really came to, I discovered that I was trapped to the bottom of the ocean, the bottom of the sea, in the area that I was in, that the apartment was located. A tornado came through that 
community and it picked my apartment up because it was a wooden, I think if they call it T111, was a wooden structure. We have at least, they had at least eight to 10 apartment complex in that area. But I was living in the one to the very end. I was like in one of the last ones that were to the end. So the wind got up under the apartment and that tornado lift that apartment up. It was me and another elderly gentleman. He was in a one bedroom and I was in a one bedroom. The tornado literally picked those two apartments up together because they were joined together. Toss it into the ocean where I was trapped to the bottom for 27 minutes, I was told, when I surfaced to the top. And while I was trapped to the bottom of that water, I had on the sweatshirt and I fight my way to get it off because I couldn't swim and I couldn't float to the top. And I keep fighting, trying to surface, and I was fighting, trying to surface, you know, like moving my hands, moving my feet, and trying to surface, trying to surface, and I couldn't surface. And I was there just saying, Lord, what is happening? Lord, what is going on? And I took that sweatshirt off, tossed that, well, you know, it's under the water, so it, it, I just took it off. And I kept fighting and trying to surface to the top, and I couldn't surface to the top. And in my heart, I began to talk to the Lord. And I say, Lord, I try everything that I could try to surface, but I can't surface. I say, let your will be done. Let your will be done. I say this in my heart to God. And instantly, my brothers, my sisters, immediately, instantly, when I said, Lord, let your will be done, my hands shoot straight up out of the water. My hand literally shoot straight up out of the water and landed on part of the apartment. Well, it was a wooden structure, so you know that was scattered, break up, scattered, floating on top of the water. And my hand landed on a piece of the wood from the apartment and I was able to pull my neck up, you know, pull myself up on that wood. And when I look out, I could see persons along the shores just walking up and down, looking and looking. And I began to like wave and scream out and wave and scream out. And two gentlemen by the name of Mr. Kevin Wallace, Valentino Carey, they just threw themselves in the water and they swam out to where I was. And they came and they got me brothers and sisters they took me on the shore and I began to ask where was my baby where was my child and the search team they everybody would just we could swim just was in the water searching and looking trying to find out and we was there just looking and they decided that because of the trauma that they would have to you know they, they can't keep me on the shore no more they rushed me up to the community clinic the Bullocks Harbor community clinic where I was up there and they was treating me and just trying to get me to calm down and I kept waiting and waiting and waiting for word that they found her and I was sitting there in the clinic surrounded by doctors, by nurses and by family, friends, persons were there. Like I said, my husband was out checking on the vehicle so you know when he heard the news how devastating that was for him. And we was there to the clinic for about two, three hours. No word, and I keep saying, where's my baby? Where's my daughter? Where's my baby? And guys, for the time, for the time, and finally, officer, police officer that was guest in charge at that time, Officer Devalier, he said he found her. She was floating under the rocks. She was floating under the rocks, but because of the two apartments, you know, scattering, the water just, I guess, took her in a different direction from where they were looking. And finally, they found her. 
It was hours that passed. They pronounced her. She drowned on impact because she had a bump on her head. And they pull up out of the water. And they call a private chatter. And came and got us. My husband, a body, put it in the body bag, put it in the aircraft, and flew us into Nassau and Providence, Bahamas. And guys, it was a rough time for me. But I stopped by to encourage someone today. That no matter what the pain may be, no matter what the situation may be in their life, to know that God is faithful. It's been, I think, 30, about, yeah, next year would be 30 years. It's 29 years. And I just want to stop by to encourage someone today that God is faithful. He said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I know that God has me, have me here for a plan and a purpose. I've been in a boat accident where I was literally knocked out of the boat, thrown into the water, can't swim, had to hold on to a mangrove until somebody was able to pull me back up into the boat. I was in so much situations in my life. And the hand of God brought me through and brought me out. I say to you today, though the storm may be raging in your life, don't give up because God has not given up on you. Trust in the Lord. Put your trust in Him and know that He will bring you out. I think it was eight months to a year later, my husband and I, we conceived and we had a daughter. And then five years later, we had another daughter. And then nine years after that, I had my son. And I told you guys the story about his life. God is so faithful. I want to encourage you today. That tornado came through that island and it devastated my life. It destroyed my life. It took everything that we had, everything, everything. It took everything. But I am standing today because he said, I will restore unto you the hairs that the locusts have eaten, the caterpillar, the common worm, and the kangaroo kind of worm. God will restore you today. He is my hiding place. He is my deliverer. He is my comfort. He is my God and Him will I trust because He has delivered me. He is still delivering me right now. It hasn't been an easy journey. It hasn't been an easy road. But they that wait upon the Lord, He shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I encourage you today, my brothers and sisters, God is faithful. I am sharing this testimony to encourage you today. Disaster, storms, hurt, pain, devastation, traumatizing, floods and earthquakes, things will happen. But if you trust God, he will bring you out, he will deliver you, he will set you free. It was hard. It was so hard and it was so painful. It took me a long time. But by the grace of God, I am an overcomer. I still go through things in my life. I still go through situations. I still go through um, circumstances. But I trust in the Lord God who brought me out then, who was still bringing me out. Who said, I will hold you up in the palm of my righteous right hand. He said, when thou passes through the water, when thou go through the flood, when thou um, go through the fire. He said, it will not burn you, neither the flame kindle upon you. Because why God is with you, he is with you today. 
He's always been there. No matter how painful, no matter how hard, how devastating, how traumatized, to know that God is with you. He said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Family, friends, they give up on you. They will fail you. They will let you down. But God will not give up on you. He will not let you down. Remember the story of the prodigal son? The prodigal son said, give me what mine. Give me my portion. And he went and he lived lavishly and he just wasted and abused all of his all all that his, his father had given to him. But his father didn't give up on him. He went for years and he did this, did that, did the next. But one day, as the father was standing outside just looking, hoping that his son will come home. And the son did come home. And what he say? He said, My son who was dead is now alive. Bring the father's, kill the father's calf, bring the ring, bring the shoe, bring the robe, bring everything. God always, always, his arms is always open, waiting for you and waiting for me to return to him. I encourage you today to just stay with God because he is always with you. Don't give up, don't throw in the towel. Trust God. In your darkness and your weakness and your brokenness and your sadness, trust God today. Trust God today and lean on Him today. I encourage you everywhere to just trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. I thank you, my brothers and sisters around the world, throughout the Bahamas, wherever you would view this message today, to just be encouraged. Thank you for liking my video. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you all who supports me. Thank you. And may God continue to bless you and keep you. I just want to encourage you, no matter where you are, no matter who you are in this world, you might be a young teenage boy, a young teenage girl, a man, a woman, a husband, a wife. I want you to trust in the Lord and to know that God is our deliverer. He will deliver you. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart today. Wait on the Lord. God bless you. God strengthen you. My greatest testimony will touch somebody to hold on and don't give up and know that in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your circumstances, I was trapped for 27 minutes fighting for my life to the bottom of that water, cannot surface, cannot swim. And all I said in my heart was, God, let your will be done. All you have to do is open up your mouth and say, God, I tried everything, I've done it all, God, and nothing seems to be working. Let your will be done. I give it to you. I even speak to myself today. As a mother, we still go through things with our families, with our children. But I say to us today, just say, God, let your will be done. Jesus, let your will be done in my life. In that situation, I seems to have no control, no handle over. God, I place it to you today. I place it in your hands today. God, let your will be done in my life, in that situation. I pray you trust in God and you give it over to him today that he would heal, that he would restore, that he will deliver and set you free. The peace and the blessing of God be upon you today. I am a survivor. I am an overcomer. I am a victor today because victory is in Jesus. Victory is yours today. Victory is mine today because greater is he that is in you, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Stand strong in the liberty where Christ has set you free. You are free today because the blood of Jesus Christ paid it all for you and for me. God bless you. God keep you. God strengthen you as you lay it all on the altar today. Say, Lord, let your will be done in my life in my situation. Lord, I give it to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Take it today, Lord, because I can't do it by myself today. God bless you. God keep you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Be blessed, everyone.
and always put God first in everything. Trust in him today. Trust in him today. And he will bring you out. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.